Since you're watching this video, I'm going to assume you probably already know about the YouTube channel Corridor. They make videos about visual effects, and last week they had a little competition to see if they could recreate a Bob Ross painting in 3D in the time that it took him to paint it, which was about 27 minutes. The guys at Corridor all had really different approaches to the final render. There was a stylized version, a realistic one, and even one version that was made using the Unreal Engine. I incorrectly thought that this looked like a lot of fun, so here's my version of the same painting by Bob Ross created in 3D software in less than 30 minutes. So I started off with a ground plane about 30 meters square and I gave it 100 subdivisions so I could go in with the sculpt tools and start to shape the terrain. 27 minutes is not a lot of time to make a whole render so I didn't spend a lot of time on this part. To be honest I was in a little bit of a panic because I honestly thought there was no way I could possibly finish this thing in the allotted time. So I just made some really rough looking hills and valleys in the terrain and I called it a day. The original painting looks down into the scene, but I thought it would be nice to have the camera looking up the hill instead with the little shack on top. The footage has only been sped up about two or three times from real speed, so you can see how fast I was working here. I normally spend at least a few hours, if not a whole day on a render like this, so 27 minutes was really pushing it. Once the train was in place, I added a HDR image to provide the background and to give the initial lighting for the scene. I just used the easy HDRI add-on for this. It's a really powerful little tool, but unfortunately it doesn't allow you to control the rotation of the HDR. So I just had to go into the world shader editor and rotate the whole thing around until we were facing the sun. To create the grass, I used another add-on called Botanique. It's proved to be a real lifesaver in this render. There's really no way I would have been able to finish this scene if I had to model all the plants individually. So I just threw in a few of the different grass assets into the scene and I grouped them all into one collection called grass. Then I just hid them so they wouldn't show up in the final render. I used Blender's geometry node system to distribute the grass group all over the ground plane. I kept messing this part up because the time pressure was getting to me and it was making me really sloppy. It's a pretty simple process to distribute grass all over a plane like this with geometry nodes. You just use a point distribute node which covers the whole ground in points and then you use the point instant node to tell each one of those points to be an object from the grass collection. Then I just use a join geometry node which adds in a copy of the original ground plane back into the scene. So I ended up with a pretty nice looking grass field very quickly, although I did forget to give the grass some random rotation. Not that you can really tell in the final render, but it's something I would go back and change if I had the chance. I gave the ground this quick mud texture using a PBR texture set. If you just press Ctrl, Shift and T with the principal node selected, you can just add all the texture maps at once, which is a nice little time saver. I tweaked the tiling of the texture and mixed in a little bit of a darker brown color, but otherwise I didn't make any other changes to the ground material. In the weight painting mode, I covered only parts of the ground that would actually be visible to the camera. And then I changed the draw type to subtract and I drew out a little winding path through the scene. I named the vertex group for this grass distribution. Then I just went into the geometry node setting and under the distribution factor for the grass, I used the group that I've just made. That creates a nice little path in the middle of the grass and it also stops any grass from appearing off the camera, which saves on my PC resources. Now I have a Ryzen 5950X, which is a really beefy CPU, but it still can get bugged down very easily when you have thousands of grass particles or whatever. I didn't want to have any performance issues when I'm under a time limit, so it was worth spending a little bit of time just to make sure that there's no grass in areas we don't need them. So in real time, about seven minutes had passed at this point and the actual environment was complete. I started to think maybe I might be able to get this finished in time. For the little shack, I just created a box and I put a loop cut around the middle. Then I grabbed the top edge and I pulled it up to make the roof. Then I just extruded the roof out along its normals to create the overhanging eaves. Then I just duplicate the whole building and I scaled it down a little bit, slid it into place and that became the little side part of the shack. I did actually mess up the proportions on this shack a little bit at first. I couldn't really decide how big everything should be. The door and the window were made just by selecting some edge loops and beveling them out, then extruding in and out until I got something that kind of looked like a door and a window. You're not going to say these very up close, so I wasn't too worried about them looking particularly good. 
I did notice at this point that it's either a really low window or a really high door, but I didn't have time to fix weird little proportion problems like that. To be honest, I was in full anxiety mode at this point because I had about 10 minutes passed and I really felt like I hadn't made much progress. I made the shack's material with another PBR texture set of some wooden planks. I didn't have time for a proper UV unwrap the model, but I didn't actually need to because a quick and dirty cube project did a good enough job. I originally planned to give the roof its own separate material and do a bit of texture work there too, but I was pleasantly surprised that the wood texture actually looked okay and it all lined up right on the roof. Since it was a good way to save some time, I figured I would just skip adding the tile shingles to the roof. If I have time at the end, I can always come back and change that. If not, it looks okay as it is. When you're under this sort of time pressure, anything you can do to save like a minute or two of extra texture work is well worth it. I did a pretty rough job of placing the house into the scene to be honest, but I did go back and fiddle with the proportions just a little bit more until it wasn't bugging me so much. So now that the environment and the house was done, I could finally start on all those damn plants. This is where the botanic add-on really came in handy. It has this huge library of different plant and tree types and it comes in various different seasons. You can even add wind animations. The developer of Botanic was good enough to give me a discount code to pass on to you guys. If you use the code you'll get 33% off Botanic until the 21st of August. I'll leave my affiliate link and the discount code in the description of this video. I highly recommend you pick it up right now while it's so cheap because it's a really excellent add-on. I really hate trying to place assets in 3D space like this while you're building out a composition. You think everything looks good and then you check it from another point of view and you realise the trees in the background are all 500 feet tall or whatever. I normally open up the split view so that I can see the scene from two different perspectives at once, but I was in a bit of a rush and my brain wasn't working properly so I never thought to do that. So once all the main trees were in place I had a good idea of the depth of the scene and I decided to increase the depth a little bit with some atmospheric fog, after all the original painting has a lot of like haze going on. So I just added this massive cube until it covered the whole scene, then I removed the principal shader from it and into the volume slot I added a principal volume shader. I used a really low density setting and I gave it a little bit of a yellow hue, that just gave it this nice early morning foggy feeling. For some extra set dressing, I used another really handy add-on called Vegetation. It has trees and stuff like Botanic, but its real strength comes in all these pre-made assets that you don't normally get in tree and vegetation packs. It's got like plant pots, tree stumps, and all these collections of assets bundled together. Like you'll have a hedgerow that's got different flowers and rocks and things in it, all as one pre-made bundle. The bundled assets like that really save a lot of time when you're trying to just sort of fill in the gaps and flesh out a scene. Instead of placing every individual plant and flower, you can just throw in a one asset that's got like a whole group of them together. I'll also leave the link for that add-on in the description, it's definitely worth checking out too. So at this point in the process I had less than 10 minutes left and I still needed to add the finishing touches, render the scene out and composite it. So I was in a little bit of a panic. The fence posts were really really simple, I literally just got a cube, stretched it out, Q projected it and I stuck the same building texture on top of it. I knew that they'd only be visible as a silhouette basically anyway in the distance, so it really didn't matter about making them look good. The original painting also had a few fence posts that were near the camera, but I didn't really have time to make any decent looking fence posts. I'd rather just leave them out of the shot than add something close to the camera that looks bad. On quite a lot of episodes of The Joy of Painting, Bob Ross would just bring out like a little squirrel. Or something that he'd found in nature and rescued. I don't have a squirrel at hand right now so I'll just show you a shot of my little dog Maximus instead. The compositing for this scene was really simple mostly because I didn't have time to do anything that was actually complex. I added a two pixel blur to the render because I always think that CG comes out looking too sharp so I always add a one or a two pixel blur. Then I thought I would like to have a little bit more fog in the scene that I have some more control over. So I just mixed together the render with this pale yellow colour and I normalised the depth pass which automatically comes out of Blender, stuck that into a colour ramp and I used that as the factor of the mix node. What that allowed me to do basically was play around with the colour ramp and I could control where the fog would go. Since it's based on the depth of the scene, the further you are away from the camera, 
the stronger the fog effect will get. The normalized depth pass was a little bit noisy because I used a low sample count and I had all the volumetrics in the scene. To fix that I just used the denoising node on the depth pass and that did a good enough job of clearing everything up. Finally I thought that the whole image looked a little bit too flat. To add some more definition to all the assets I just went back and I added this low uh, sun lamp into the scene that would kind of illuminate things from the side. It did a really nice job of just highlighting the edge of some of the assets. And done. The final render finished with literally about 5 seconds to spare. I started to really worry that it wasn't going to be finished in time to be honest. Um, Cycles X was running a little bit slow. I think it was probably just because I had a dual monitor set up going and I was screen recording at the same time. Either way it nearly gave me a damn heart attack. I was pretty happy with the final render though. I mean it's not exactly my best work but the fact I managed to finish it in the allotted time is a big achievement for me because I've been trying to speed up my workflow a lot lately. And to be honest, I think it holds up pretty nicely compared to what the guys over at Corridor managed in the same amount of time. I'll leave a link to Corridor's video below. I'll also link this really interesting CG Geek video he made a while ago, where he made this beautiful animation inspired by Bob Ross. I really hope you guys liked this one. I certainly didn't. It was stressful as hell.